Hello and welcome to the top five console fanboys of 2021. I thought it'd be fun to wrap up the year with a look back at everyone I've responded to in 2021 and pick out the five most egregious, most unforgivable, and most in need of correction. Also, I know this video is a couple weeks late, took a lot longer than I expected to make, but today we're gonna look at the 2021 videos that made us roll our eyes the hardest and also take a look back at where those videos and channels are today. Links to all five of these videos are in the description if you wanna follow along with me. And before we begin, I wanna sincerely thank you all for the support over the last year. The growth throughout 2021 was absolutely amazing and I plan on really amping up my video output throughout this year. Tuesdays and Fridays, new videos, no excuses. But seriously, thank you all so much for sticking with the channel and being part of this. I never thought I would have gotten this far. But without further ado, grab some popcorn, get some Wendy's, and let's take a look back at the biggest console fanboys of 2021. At number five is none other than Crap Gamer. back at the beginning of the year when he said games going to PC might just drive him away from gaming in general. He said the usual things about how he hates PC gaming and exclusives are really good for some reason, but the real kicker here was that he started talking about Sony games getting ported to PC as if that was the end of the platform itself. The original video is still up, but that like to dislike ratio is not doing it any favors. Look, Sony just posted their biggest, uh, you know, income revenue ever yeah and that revenue is going to get even higher once they put their games on a bigger platform i feel like i'm repeating myself okay their biggest ever they basically are, are making what nintendo and xbox divisions are combined and yet that's not enough no it's not enough because they're big companies and if you're a big company and you have an easy way to increase your revenue yeah you do that welcome to economics I hope you enjoy your stay. You know what I mean? I understand that, that the price of games are going up and stuff like that, but they're literally making more money than they ever have before. Yeah, so why would they stop there? And so much like Microsoft trying to double the price of Xbox Live Gold, um, you know, I, I feel like th th this is a bit of a misjudging the room and, and kind of reading the room wrong. I'm sorry, Microsoft doubling the price of Xbox Live and Sony putting their exclusives on PC. You think those are equally bad in terms of not reading the room? Do I have that right? Microsoft trying to double the charge of something you shouldn't have to pay for and Sony making their games more available to more people. You think those are equally bad? Wow. You know, and I do feel like that's kind of a mistake. Um, you know, at the end of the day, am I going to continue to buy PlayStation games? Yeah. So this affects you not at all. I'm a console gamer for the same reason I still buy Xbox and Xbox games. Okay. Is because I'm never going to be a PC gamer. I'm never going to be a cloud gamer. Yeah. So you're the person I was talking about. You're the person who plays on console and still buys multi-platform games because you don't want to play on PC. You want to play on console. You want to play those games. You just don't want to play them on PC. And that's an option. Weird, weird, weird. It's almost like I described that exact fucking thing five minutes ago. Right, so the, the place for me to play are these consoles. And that's what I suspect most people will say. Globally, no, that's not what most people would say. And most people will do. But at some point you have to realize Sony is keeping, pushing people right they're going to keep pushing it right it started off as well uh you know we want you know we're going to put you know a, a game here or there maybe a multiplayer game on pc right and then you know then it was a three-year-old game and now it's a two-year-old game and then next thing you know it's a day and day game and i think that that's probably um where this is all headed and yeah that's a great thing it's a very, very good thing for more people to have access to more games. That's always going to be a good thing and you will never convince me otherwise. And I guess each of us has to kind of assess that and um, look at it, uh, you know, sort of as, as, as it is, as a whole. Crap Gamer is the last person in the world to tell other people they should be assessing something. You know, and, and for me personally, is it gonna stop me from gaming? No, is it a little depressing? <laughs> yeah. Imagine being depressed that more people get to play the games that you like. Like, imagine finding it depressing that more people get to play a game you hold in high esteem. You know, for me personally, like, as I get older, you know, as I approach that, that big 4-0, and I've been gaming since, like, the 1980s. Holy shit, you're almost 40? I'm sorry, you... I didn't, I didn't know this. You're almost 40? What are you doing? Go outside! Who gives a fuck about this? Um, you know, just a lot of the stuff, I'm a hardcore, like, old school type gamer. Old school gaming was on PC. Everything you say is just wrong. And a lot of this stuff I don't like, and so eventually at some point I'll probably either, you know, 
you, you either quit gaming or you, you, you game less. You would rather quit gaming than deal with this. You're bringing up quitting gaming because games are going to the PC and you're almost 40. Sorry, I'm still taken aback at that. How do you, like, how have you lived life this long and have such little understanding of how the industry works, have such little self-awareness about these things? I can't. I'm never going to get over that. And I think that that's probably a closer reality for me personally. It's a closer reality that you quit. Oh my god. At number four is one of my favorites of the year, a channel who claims not to be a fanboy multiple times, but then goes on and on and on about how the Uncharted PC ports are a horrible idea. The guy even says Sony had enough money from the PS4 versions that they didn't need anymore, which is easily the most backwards economic advice I've ever heard. The original video is still up today, but likes and dislikes have been disabled, so I think it's safe to consider this one an L. I think it's very greedy of them, and I think it's obviously money-driven. Greedy and money-driven are two different things. I don't understand how this one is greedy, but money-driven, obviously, they're a business. They have to make money, and I'm not even shaming them for that. If you're a business, yeah, you have to be money-driven. Otherwise, you're not going to be a very successful business. And that's cool. Yeah, it's a corporation. Yeah, no, it's cool. I just have an issue with it. I get it. It's a company. They need to make money. I understand. Well, they don't need to. They've, they've, they've... They've garnered billions of dollars since the inception of PlayStation back in in the 90s. Okay, like they've they've. Did you just say they don't have to make money because they've already made money? Let me let like let's hear that again. I get it. It's a company. They need to make money. I understand. Well, they don't need to. They've 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 garnered billions of dollars since the inception of PlayStation back in in the 90s okay like they've they've so because sony has made money in the past they don't need to make money now and uncharted 4 shouldn't go to pc that's the argument you're making because they made money in the past they don't need money now i don't know if you're familiar with how business works or how the economy works but companies and corporations they don't keep all the money that they earn all the revenue they generate, that doesn't just go into their pocket, that goes back into operation. And even the biggest companies need to keep making money or else they will go under. The Walt Disney Company, one of the biggest corporations on earth, lost money in their recent financial reports. Disney is in the red, but Sony doesn't need to make money. All because Uncharted 4 is going to PC, and all this while saying you're not a fanboy. The complete lack of self-awareness is astonishing. They have so much money. And they're spending it. Because that's how this works. And have and have made so much money. And and for them to kind of, uh, you know, take take this approach, which, I mean, obviously Xbox, uh, you know, a lot of their, the quote-unquote exclusive Xbox games go on PC. I mean, it's owned by the same company, Microsoft. Um, so that's understandable. Did you just say the PC is owned by Microsoft? But for Sony to take this... This very odd switch approach really shows them trying to compete with Xbox. Yeah, God forbid PlayStation competes with Xbox. Can you imagine? And maybe that's because it's a it's a it's a business model that works for Xbox. Will this work for Sony? Who knows? And it's already working for Sony. They've already been doing this for a couple years and it's already working. Ultimately, yeah, I am a fan. I am a consumer. Not a fanboy, I'm a consumer. I'm not a pony. I'm a, I'm a consumer. Oh, you're not a fanboy. Keep that in mind as we keep going. Just think of everything he said so far and keep that in mind as he keeps going. He's not a fanboy. He insists. And if he says it, it has to be true. This is your content. This is your channel. Okay. At number three, we've got perhaps the most blatantly bad take of the whole year. In case you missed it, Microsoft announced back in early 2021 that they were doubling the price of Xbox Live Gold for some reason. I don't remember their reason. But like clockwork, the Xbox fanboys came out and defended it. In this video, Iraq X decrees that people who don't want to pay the extra money for Xbox Live are lazy and broke and need to get out of the hobby as a whole. Astonishingly, this video is still up and the likes and dislikes are still public, which I almost respect. Because if you was a real fucking gamer, you'd have just coughed up the fucking bread or got out. Uh, no, that's not a gamer, that's a bootlicker. I don't have no fucking sympathy for you broke-ass motherfuckers out here crying about not being able to afford Xbox Live or afford games. Bootlicker. Someone who seeks favor or goodwill in a servile, degraded way. He comes across as a facile bootlicker. Someone who would do anything like a lapdog to please somebody in the chain of command.
Hmm. Because I was a broke ass motherfucker once and he might had to buy me a game. And guess what? I made a decision in 2015 between Rise of the Tomb Raider or Turkey. I chose Turkey. That's a good choice. Turkey will give you infinitely more enjoyment than Rise of the Tomb Raider. And Turkey is temporary. Think about that. I knew what my priorities was. My priorities was not gaming. <laughs> my <pri> gaming <laughs> No, sorry. I thought of a joke. I probably can't make it. Uh, thanks, YouTube. And it is not the developer's uh, responsibility to make gaming affordable for me. I had to up my game, work more, get a better job in the tourism industry, and fucking make that bread so I could afford gaming. You're describing two different things. You're describing somebody who likes gaming but doesn't have income so they need a job. So there's that scenario where then there's what happened a few weeks ago is completely different. This was gamers not wanting to be taken advantage of. This had nothing to do with people being broke. Obviously this decision would have an effect on people with not as much money to spend on gaming or not as much money that they're willing to spend on gaming. That's the other thing you need to realize. Just because somebody doesn't want to spend $120 a year on Xbox Live doesn't mean they're broke. I wouldn't call myself broke, I'm doing just fine. But if they raised the price to $120, you bet your ass I was canceling, just out of principle. I'm not about to drop 120 bucks a year on that. That's insulting. It's bad enough you're charging people $60 for something they shouldn't have to pay for. Now you're doubling the price? Get the fuck out of here, Microsoft. Also, I'm not a real gamer. Motherfucker, I spent over, including, including the Xbox Series X purchase, I think I must have spent over $1,000 in gaming last year. Yeah, it's not a competition. How much money you spend on something doesn't define how well you know it or how much you love it. I mean, one thing I always preach about PC gaming is that it's not expensive. Probably over $1,500, the most I ever spent in a year. I just buy games on GP to support the developers. Even the shit that's on Game Pass, because Sega Man and HeBot, you know what I mean? They put the heat on my ass like, yo, E-Rock, man, we, we, we buy the shit off of Game Pass. We just don't pay play the Game Pass games. We support the developers. So because my bulls was doing it in the Exile podcast, I started supporting the developers, look. And how do you feel about Game Pass? A relatively cheap subscription service that gives people access to a lot of games that they may not be able to afford to buy all individually. I mean, you clearly seem to have no problem with that. I even bought that corny ass Marvel's The Avengers shit. I'm not a gamer. Nigga, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. You're bragging about buying games you don't want to play. This is how bad games keep getting made. I take great umbrage to that shit. I played all I play all of these games. I put up gameplay. I just don't do fucking videos like Crap Gamer where I talk about it, nigga. Yeah, it's probably a good thing you don't make videos like Crap Gamer. I don't think the internet needs more of that kind of content. I be about it. Yeah, I'm heated with that shit, nigga. I take great umbrance with that shit. So whoever that dude was that said that shit, nigga, fuck you. You don't know me, motherfucker. I mean, he definitely struck a chord. That's always the funniest thing about stuff like this. It's like, this doesn't affect me. I'm not upset about this. Proceeds to complain about it for five minutes. And number two is one of the longest videos of the year and kind of a blast from the past. You don't see big console versus PC lists like this nowadays. And I wish you did because they make some of the best content for me. Shocker, he took this video down. Not surprising since he tried to defend paying to play games online. And he made pretty much all the stereotypical console points, but he got almost every detail wrong. This one was a trip. Number two, no graphics card or CPU needed. I'm sorry, weren't Microsoft and Sony both fucking wetting themselves over how awesome their hardware is? Now, yes, uh, consoles do have CPUs, but they don't have CPUs like PC. This is actually true, because console CPUs are shit. See, if you play a game on PC without a CPU, or without a graphics card, you're not gonna enjoy that game the way you could enjoy it on a console. You see- Okay, for starters, if you don't have a CPU in your computer, you're not gonna be able to do anything, let alone run games. And as for the GPU, it's totally possible to play games without one. Sure, you won't get amazing visuals, but it's completely possible. My laptop doesn't have a GPU, and I can emulate on it without really any problems at all. And there's still plenty of budget PC gamers out there using APUs. Obviously, you want a dedicated graphics card if you truly want to experience PC gaming, but that doesn't mean it's impossible without one, not even close. PCs are not a gaming. It's not for gaming. That's weird, because there's over a billion people using them that way. Even though they're called a gaming PC, a PC is not only built for gaming. It's built for a lot of things, you know. Gaming being one of those things. If I build my PC to be really good at gaming, it is a gaming PC. 
But also computers as a whole are designed to be able to do a lot of different things. A computer isn't designed for any one purpose. That's kind of the point. And the openness of the hardware is what makes them so good for gaming. A console, and I'll get to that in a minute, is only for gaming. That's weird, because I've been hearing for years about how they're entertainment centers. So, if you play, let's say, GTA V on a, on a PC without a graphics card or a CPU, you're going to see that that game, that GTA V is not going to play too good without it. Again, good luck doing anything on a computer that doesn't have a CPU. But also, friendly reminder that the 7th and 8th generation of consoles didn't have GPUs either. So your own comparison here doesn't even check out. You say a PC suffers with game performance if it doesn't have a GPU, but consoles didn't even have dedicated GPUs until last year. They were using APUs. And GTA V's been out since 2013, so what's your point? You're gonna have to go through a lot to get that game to work. Settings and stuff like that. I mean, GTA V runs like garbage on the consoles anyway, so not a great comparison. Also, God forbid you tweak settings to make the game run closer to how you want it. So... I just wanted to let you guys know that PC does, does have its downfalls. Those downfalls being the inability to run without a CPU and the lower game performance without a GPU. Two things that are equally applicable to the consoles. I need weed. Hang on. Bust out the BOD. What? The bong of destiny. But at number one today, absolutely no surprise, is the video that I already named the worst of the year. I won't preface this one too much because it's pretty self-explanatory, but if you want to see it in all its foul glory, there are links in the description to all of these full videos. Reason 4. Cheaper Gaming Oh boy, can't wait for this one. Can't wait to hear how the platform with objectively more expensive games, objectively less marketplaces, and objectively more predatory practices is somehow cheaper. Let's get real. If you want to get a gaming PC, price is probably going to start at $500. How is that different than a next-gen console? And at that price, you'd be lucky to play games from two generations ago at 60 FPS. I got my first gaming PC during the PS4 Xbox One era, and it had a 1050 in it. Like, not even the TI variant, just the standard GTX 1050. And it ran everything I wanted it to at 1080p with better frames than the console versions, and usually above 60 FPS. Just a quick Google search reveals you can find this card, both the standard and the TI variant, for less than $200. And this card doesn't even need additional power, you just plug it right into the motherboard. Meaning if you have a desktop PC laying around, you can just get this card for 200 bucks, maybe spend another 100 or so on some memory or better CPU if you want, and boom, you have a machine capable of running pretty much everything from the 8th gen console era at better performance than the 8th gen consoles. Plus, you'll still be able to play modern games, just at lower settings. This is usually the part of the video where I come up with some creative insult, but I'm just kind of tired, so I'll leave that up to the imagination. What the fuck? If you want any kind of quality for a PC, get ready to drop some real cash. I'm talking deposit on a city apartment kind of cash. Who the fuck trying to spend that much cash just to game? If you want a nice, modern gaming PC, yes, you have to spend a decent chunk of change up front. Prices vary depending on things like used versus new, pre-built versus a la carte, I recommend a la carte, and whether or not the crypto miners are still pissing in each other's mouths that month. Yes, building a PC is more expensive than buying a console, nobody's gonna deny that, but what you get for your money is so much more than what you'd get on console. That's why you pay more. Better performance, more options, more customization, and then you have the long-term monetary things, like cheaper games. You don't have to pay to play online. Your tech is more future-proof because of the lack of generations. Repairs are exponentially cheaper because you can just open up the machine and fix or replace one part instead of having to replace the whole console. Machine to machine, the PC is more expensive, but hobby to hobby, the PC is ridiculously cheaper. Like, yes, you spend more on the PC itself, but you make that money back pretty quickly with how little money you have to spend on it over time. And let's not mention the constant upgrading to keep up with the latest games. I haven't upgraded my PC in over a year, and that set of upgrades I did a year ago was just because I had some disposable income. It wasn't out of necessity. The last time I had to upgrade my PC was in like 2018, when I switched from DDR3 to 4, and even that was technically optional. No way! Console gamers never have to worry about that. Because you don't have the option to worry about it. We buy a console and we're good for about seven years until the new console comes out. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Being locked into one set of hardware for seven years is not a good thing for anyone. And if you don't understand why, you haven't been paying attention. Hell yeah. 
So now we can save all that extra cash to buy all those sweet exclusives that PCs will never see. While paying more for games, while paying 50 bucks a year to play your own games online, while paying more for repairs in case your console breaks, while paying another 500 bucks or so for the upgraded version of your console, while paying way more for extra controllers and hard drives. Like, how do you not get it? So those are my picks for the top five console fanboys of 2021. I'm probably gonna do this again next year because it was weirdly fun. And yeah, thank you for watching the channel all year. You're the biggest MVP. Go get some Wendy's and uh, yeah, toodles.